Let me read to you a passage from the fifth chapter of St. Matthew's Gospel, verses 43 to 48. It's the Gospel for Saturday of the first week of Lent. St. Matthew writes, Jesus said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's from Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 48. Our Lord speaks of love, the command to love. In terms of what Christ expects of his disciples, this passage I've just read from the Sermon on the Mount, which brings together Christ's general teaching, is clearly one of the most significant of the texts of the Gospels. Some have thought that Christ's teaching that we are to love our enemies is the distinguishing difference between, between Christianity and all earlier religions. Well, whether that is the case is a matter of historical fact and research. I suspect that elements of this exalted teaching could be found in the best of religious thinkers and teachers, independently of Jesus Christ. I say this because the religious sense and mind of natural man, given to him by the Creator, can attain surprising insights. John Nolland has written that there were some precedents in his book, The Gospel of Matthew, a commentary on the Greek text. He writes that the Babylonian text, The Councils of Wisdom, contains, he thinks, something of a similar call, as does the Egyptian instruction of Ananope, and the Greek Stoics express, to a point, dicta of universal love. Features of the idea of loving one's enemies appeared in writers such as Cicero, Seneca and the Cynics, and I suspect that Buddhism and Taoism also share something of this. But let that discussion continue as it may. Let us not be too anxious to show that in, Jesus, that in this Jesus Christ was utterly novel, for he himself said that he had come to fulfil the law, and certainly not to abolish it. What is plain, however, is that in the teaching of Jesus Christ, the command to love your enemies and to pray for those who persecute you is immediately and constantly at the forefront. So evident is this, that history identifies it as the teaching of Jesus Christ. From him it has passed into the stream of thought on human perfection and the Church's spiritual teaching constantly upholds it as a necessary feature of true Christian holiness, and indeed of human goodness. Despite the likes of Nietzsche, who, who rejected the command, arguing that love for one's enemies is weakness and dishonesty, it is broadly accepted as being the height of human morality, however it might be lived and applied in particular circumstances. Christ's command expressing quintessentially the teaching of the Sermon on the Mount, commends itself to the moral sense of man. To begin with, we notice that this sacred teaching reaches a most significant climax, which summarises the whole. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Christ is speaking of human perfection, and we are to strive to attain it. Man, of course, naturally seeks his perfection, as does every living thing. But there are exceedingly formidable obstacles in his path. Obstacles in understanding, obstacles in the willing of it, obstacles without number in the way. Christ clarifies for man in what it is that his true perfection consists. It consists preeminently in love without limit. Love even for those who do one harm. Love for one's very enemies. A man will flourish according as love flourishes in him. Further, Christ reveals that it is especially this 
which distinguishes the heart and the life of God. The more perfect we grow in love, whatever be the injury, the more we become like unto God. We must aim to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Christ does not state this as an ideal of fantasy. It is to be a daily ambition and it must be attained. It is a categorical imperative to use the phrase but not the thought of Kant. But what Christ guarantees and which is absolutely distinctive to him is the gift of his grace which will fortify and transform the moral striving of man and make him more and more like unto Jesus Christ himself. Christ offers to change our hearts from within so that we are indeed loving more and more as he loves and as therefore God our Father loves. What he asks of us for this blessing is faith in his person, the faith that leads to deeds of obedience to his commands. Go to the whole world, he said, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. Thus it is that the path to moral perfection has been opened to man. Man not only has learnt from Christ what it is that his perfection consists in, namely love after the manner of God, but he has received the wherewithal for its attainment. The wherewithal is divine grace. Christ came to baptize in the Holy Spirit, to take away the sin of the world, John chapter 1 verse 29, and to bestow on us the power to be born of God as his adopted children, John chapter 1 verse 12 to 13. This is the good news, to know what it is to which we have been called and to have the grace at hand to attain it. As St. Paul writes, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 7 verse 25. Let us set out to be disciples of Jesus Christ in daily life, ever contemplating his person and example, ever learning from him what it means to love our brothers and our enemies as he loved us. While contemplating him, let us make it our business to live ever in the state of grace through a life of assiduous prayer, docility to Christ's teaching as it comes to us in the teaching of the Church and fervent receivers of the sacraments. It is grace that will get us there.